If you want more FPS and smoother gameplay in Fortnite Chapter 6, then keep watching as I'm about to showcase the best config settings, along with a few hidden optimizations that can give your game a boost. So if it does help out, please drop a like and subscribe for more. To begin, you want to press the Windows key and R, type in percentage sign local update a percentage sign, then follow this directory until you see the Fortnite game folder, which is essentially your config. If you delete this, then open up the game, you will have a fresh folder which basically removes all outdated files. From there if you go into the settings you'll notice they've all been reset. Things like your sensing keybinds have not been reset so don't worry about that. However if you go back in the video and configure all of these settings to be the best ones which I made a video about on screen right here. I'm just going to quickly showcase right now you want the performance mode on for lower graphics. This gets rid of grass and improves your FPS. Brightness is personal preference. Colorblind is personal preference. However for all these graphics quality settings you want all these on low or off you want the 3d resolution on 100 percent all these off shadows you definitely want off ambient occlusion you want off reflections you want off for view distance you want this on medium or higher as this affects how far you can see items in game textures you want off effects you definitely want off post processing you want off hardware ray tracing keep off and then at the bottom under advanced graphics you got nvidia reflex low latency which you need to have a nvidia gpu to use if you've got a low end PC you want this off. If you've got a mid-end PC you should try having this on and if you've got a god tier PC you'll probably benefit from having this on on plus boost. But once you've optimized all those settings there if you simply close down the game from there you can press the win plus r key again and head into local. From there you should find the fortnite game folder. Go into save, go into config, go into windows client and there you have your game user settings file. Now before you do enter this you want to ensure that read only is unchecked in its properties and once you've done that you can enter it. Once opened it should look something like this where you can see a bunch of different commands. However for the sake of this video I've put all of my commands in a separate program that's notepad plus plus so I can take advantage of this feature where I can leave comments and sort of highlight what each notable setting does to help explain each one better. If you do want to find a specific command you can press ctrl f and this will open up a search bar where you can find that command and then edit it. Be sure grass this is actually an outdated command that no longer functions in the current version of the game. GPU clash debugging. This is basically a GPU monitoring overlay which is unnecessary unless you need like debugging stuff. Latency tweak settings. Now I have the first one set to true and then I've got the second one set to like on or one as I found this is the best middle ground. Number two equals a more aggressive setting whereas zero turns it off but this is something that you should try on your specific PC and see which one feels better. DLSS quality settings. I've got this disabled. I am on Nvidia so I do disregard the AMD command. For the ray tracing settings, I have these both disabled, the nanite as well, and I've got all of the quality settings set to off or zero rather. Energy saving modes, I've got both of these turned off, so they're both on false. Display gamma, this is basically the brightness setting, and I leave this on default this season, but this is personal preference. Scrolling down from there, you should find a setting called disable mouse acceleration, and whatever you have this value set to, so true or false, it doesn't matter, because an Epic Games employee can confirm that this is for Mac systems only and it has absolutely no impact on PC or rather Windows. Moving on from that though, if you scroll down you should find the low latency input setting which is very important to have on true as this keeps your input delay low. You've also got the vSync setting which I highly recommend having this set to false in order to reduce input lag. And then just down from there we've got the resolution settings. Now I am using a 1440p monitor so that's why my res looks like this. Obviously there's more pixels with that monitor hence why it's higher. If you want a stretched resolution by the way I've got a full guide on screen or if you know how to do it already I've got some recommendations so for a lower tier PC I recommend any of these three for a medium end PC I recommend these resolutions and then for a high end PC I recommend either of these resolutions just done from that we've got the full screen mode uh, zero I'm pretty sure puts it in full screen one puts it in windowed full screen and then two just puts it in windowed you've also got audio quality level below that which I recommend highly set into high which is zero and if you go down a bit further you've got scalability groups. Now for these you've got the 3D resolution which has the best visibility at 100% which is the default one. However if you are desperate for FPS you can lower this slightly. The quality will massively reduce. It'll get really pixelated the lower you go down. Just below that though we've got view distance and yes you can set this to zero or the lowest if you need more FPS. But I myself like to set this to a farther range as I like to see things at a further distance. For the rest of the settings though it's important that you have the 
set to the lowest to get the most FPS. Then finally at the bottom we've got the rendering mode settings. You've got DirectX 11 or performance mode, both of those are technically DirectX 11, or you've got DirectX 12. And you can see that my configuration is on performance mode, that's what it looks like. Once you guys have configured your settings though, you can head to the top where it says file, you can click on save, and once you have saved that file, to prevent Fortnite from actually changing these, you can go into the properties and you can click the read only box. But do be warned, while this is checked, you will not be able to change the settings in game, it just won't let you save them at all. So if you do want to change the settings in game, you do need to unselect this. But I myself, I want to save my game user settings files, so I'm going to click apply and press ok. Moving on, you want to open up the Epic Games Launcher, go to the top right into settings, you want to scroll down to you see desktop notifications and you want to disable both of these options, as when they are pushed out by Epic Games, they can cause FPS stutters in game. After that, you can scroll down to you find additional command line arguments and if you tick this, this is optional by the way, you can try pasting in these different commands for different benefits. Next from that, head into the install options. In here, you'll see save the world, which is the specific game files for that. If you don't play it, disable this setting. High resolution textures, these are required to make the game look a lot more beautiful in game. But if you disable this setting, it'll give you a slight FPS boost. DirectX 12 shaders, these are required to use the DirectX rendering mode. If you don't use this and use performance mode, you should disable this setting. And then you've got pre down download stream assets which I like to keep enabled because if you didn't know this pre-installs all the assets when you join the lobby which prevents the assets from being streamed when you encounter them in game. So overall if you copy these exact installation options you will get more FPS. Next up let's optimize Discord and Google Chrome. Firstly in Discord head into the settings and scroll down to advanced. You'll find the hardware acceleration setting which is enabled by default and basically helps improve the overall speed smoothness of the app but if like most people you are running the app while playing the game if you've got a much lower end pc maybe a low end pc or a medium end pc many have reported that when using this setting it can cause stutters and even crashes so because of this a lot of people tend to disable the hardware acceleration setting and it's something i recommend you try to see if it does benefit you in any sort of way if it doesn't you can just go ahead and re-enable it we're going to do a similar thing but in google chrome which a lot of people do have open while playing the game. To find the setting in here, just go into the settings tab. If you then scroll down to system, you will see the hardware acceleration setting. Similar to Discord, this setting helps improve the overall smoothness of the app. But like I mentioned before, it is definitely worth disabling if you are on a lower end PC. It's something you can try and if it does benefit you, you can keep it disabled. If it doesn't, you can re-enable it. And that's been the best game user settings to use. If it did help out, please drop a like and subscribe for more. And before you go, check out any other videos on screen right now.